and welcome. Hello and welcome to episode 4 of Nutrition. This is part 2 of Minerals. Okay, we, we ended last time on the mineral food line. This time we'll start on the mineral iodine. Iodine is essential for the production of the thyroxine, which is the hormone that regulates the body's metabolic function. And you only need a hundred fifty micrograms of iodine, and you get that in iodide salt, seafood, and seaweed. If you have a deficiency of iodine, you can get a goiter, which is a large thyroid gland. You also have chafed skin, loss of hair, tiredness, sluggishness, and um, hypothyroidism. If you have an excess of iodine, you can also get a goiter, and um, you can also have hypothyroidism hypothyroidism, which is an underactive thyroid. Now, um, interactions are morning for iodine. Um, Bubbleweed is a herb that has negative interactions with iodine as it reduces to slow down the thyroid people, thyroid in people who have hyperthyroidism, which is an overactive thyroid. So be careful because if you happen to have hypothyroidism and have bubbleweed, and have um, excess iodine on iodine supplements is that going to make a difference? Okay, the next mineral we'll go on to is iron. Iron is a vital part of the protein that forms your hemoglobin, which is um, the blood that carries the oxygen to the body from the heart. You only need 15 milligrams of iron, of, um, iron a day. You get that from red meat, leafy greens, vegetables, you can get it from poultry, fish, and legumes. Uh, if you're deficient in iron, you can get anemia. And if you have too much iron, you can have a flat tooth or constipation. Um, the absorption of iron may be reduced, but if you have use anti ulcer medica medication, um, just that iodine may impede our ACE inhibitors and medications that are used to control Parkinson's, also levothyroxine and quinoline. And oral contraceptives may increase um, iron levels in the body to the oral contraceptives. The next mineral we'll do is magnesium. Magnesium aids in the relaxation of your muscles and it's necessary for the transmission of nerve impulses. It's also vital for the production of protein and development of strong bones and teeth. You need 250 milligrams of magnesium a day. You can get this in green vegetables, legumes, meats, nuts, fish and poultry. Um, if you have too much magnesium, you can have these sleepy, you can have stomach upset, you can have diarrhea. If you have too little magnesium, you can have stomach problems. Um, sleeplessness, lack of appetite, muscle, tick, hallucinations, seizures, and depression. Um, drugs that interact with magnesium include hyperoxyphosphatin, um, blood pressure medications, antibiotics, penicillin, diabetic medications, hormone replacement therapy, digoxin, levothyroxine, diuretics, adrenaline, and tridotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotrotr
Cyclone Roxism um, negatively interacts with manganese and manganese absorption may reduce be reduced with iron, calcium or zinc supplements being taken at the same time as manganese supplements being taken. Okay, let's talk about molybdenum. Molybdenum is our next mineral. Um, there are three enzymes in the body that need molybdenum to function effectively and these enzymes have a lot of various functions in the body functions in the body such as the metabolism of amino acids and the breakdowns of certain toxins in the body. You only need 75 micrograms of molybdenum in your body a day. And you get these from all the meats, green leafy vegetables, legumes, wheats and whole grains. And um, if you have a deficiency of molybdenum, you can have mental retardation, serious diseases and premature death. If you have too much molybdenum, you can have anemia. Diarrhea, problems with bone growth, and stiff swollen, swollen joints. Um, loss of copper may increase the need for molybdenum. So if you have loss of copper in your body, you may need more molybdenum. If molybdenum is paired with fluoride, it can decrease the likelihood of dental cavities. Okay, next we'll talk about nickel. Now I'm not sure of the actual role nickel plays in the body, but the differences in hormone reactions have been linked to different levels of nickel, nickel in the body. And we only need less than one milligram of nickel in the body a day. And we all probably get that because you get it from chocolate, oatmeal and nuts. And if you're deficient in nickel, you have decreased glucose levels, bone malfunction, changes in your metabolism of vitamin B12, energy nutrients, energy nutrients and calcium, so you have a change in metabolism of all of those things if you're deficient in nickel. If you have too much nickel, um, well really too much nickel is not reducing intestine supplements, it's actually from coming in contact with nickel gas and then you can get very sick and die. So it's not really about taking supplements. Um, iron absorption can be affected by nickel, so just Never, I don't think you should ever take nickel supplements anyway because you don't need much nickel well in your body. Okay, the next um, one we'll talk about is phosphorus. Phosphorus helps you perform healthy bones and teeth, and, you can, and that's the main factor of phosphorus. You need 1000 milligrams of phosphorus in your daily diet, and get that from um, dairy products, milk, and cheese, and stuff like that, and meat. Um, if you have a deficiency of phosphorus, you get brittle bones, teeth, and joint pain. If you have too much phosphorus, you'll have stomach problems. Um, the need for phosphorus is increased if it's taken in conjunction with um, mineral oils, antacids, chemotherapy, drugs, or ulcer medication. Alright, I think we'll leave it there for today, and then we'll move to part 3 next time for minerals.